Now here I want to discuss about uh, uh, this. Okay, coming back to this, um, there is a this is, there is one more component. Okay, you can see this is a fabric controller, and it is a part of your Windows Azure fabric. Okay, and I want to talk about this fabric controller because it, because it is actually playing a very important role in the whole architecture. Okay, compute definitely providing you the compute services and Windows Azure Fabric, as I told you, it is there to manage and monitor your running um, services. But there is a fabric controller which is actually playing a very important role. Now, as I told you, all Windows Azure applications and all of the data in Windows uh, Azure storage, it stays in Microsoft data centers. Okay, you know this. Now, within that data center, set of machines, uh, they are dedicated to Windows Azure, okay, and they are organized into a fabric. Now, when I'm saying word fabric, fabric is nothing, it is a collection of machines. Now, you can see here, okay, it is a complete Windows Azure, and there is a fabric, okay, you can see this, and there is a small fabric controller. Okay, now fabric is nothing, you are calling the group of systems in your Microsoft data center as fabric. And the, these group of systems or these group of machines, they are managed by a software called fabric controller. Now this fabric controller, it is replicated across group of five to seven machines and it owns all of the resources in the fabric. Now, when I'm saying all of the resources, that means it uh, consists of computers, switches, load balancer, everything, anything. And because it can communicate with fabric agent on a computer, okay, as I showed you just now, like each instance has a agent running inside it that helps it to communicate with fabric, okay. So, because it can communicate with fabric agent on every VM, it is also aware of Windows Azure application in that fabric and it also aware of the uh, Windows Azure storage just like any other application. Now this fabric controller uh, it does many uh, useful things okay it monitors all the running applications uh, it manages operating systems it takes care of things like patching the version of Windows Server uh, 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012 that runs in Windows Azure VMs. It decides where new application should run. This is a very intelligent decision. Okay, this is the role of Fabric Controller. It decides where new application should run, and it also selects physical servers to optimize hardware utilization. Again, an intelligent decision. Now, Fabric Controller depends on your configuration file. As I told you, when we publish our um, application in cloud, okay, we also provide a configuration file, which is nothing, which is just an XML file. So, who read that XML file in Microsoft Data Center? That is Fabric Controller. So, when you select, I want to host, I want, I, I, when you select a region while hosting your application, let's say Southeast Asia, so it might be using one of the Microsoft data center. Your request will go to that Southeast Asia data center. And there must be some fabric controller which is actually monitoring the group of five to seven machines. It receives your request. It reads the configuration in the configuration file. If you have mentioned three instances, it immediately start preparing three VMs to run those three instances. Okay. So when the fabric controller receives this new application, it uses the configuration file to determine how many web roles and worker role VMs to be created. Once it creates uh, these VMs, the fabric controller, it monitors each of them. If an application requires five web role and one of them dies, uh, let's say, uh, now in that scenario, fabric controller will automatically restart a new one. And even if the machine um, 
a VM is running on dice, then fabric controller will start a new machine of the web or worker role in a VM uh, or another machine and then it also resets the load balancer so that it starts pointing to a new address, new machine. So all these intelligent decisions are being handled and taken care by your fabric controller. So it is playing a very important role because most of the time people ask how these things are handled automatically. So for this we have this fabric controller. Okay, now uh, okay, so this is all about uh, the uh, features we have already discussed. Okay, regarding the storage services I can say don't confuse the storage service with your SQL Azure. Storage service is a part of Windows Azure whereas SQL Azure is another such service, another component equivalent to Windows Azure, right? So storage service, if you want to use this service, it provides you uh, three kinds of, mainly three kinds of storage services. One is table, second is, store, second is blob, third is queue. So queue you can only uh, put very small limited amount of data in it and table and blobs they are mostly used. Now don't get confused the table storage with SQL Azure tables because tables in storage uh, Azure storage services they are not RDBMS based tables. So uh, if you have worked around entity framework it is actually using that kind of concept. So you need to uh, create your own entity and then you can store the data into it. Okay, the only difference between blob and tables is that tables are more organized and in, uh, it keeps the data in a structured way. It allows you to query onto that data whereas blob is more like uh, it, is, it keeps the data in binary format so you can uh, use it like a file system. You can get the data, you can dump data, dump the data there but you cannot query onto that data. And table storage service it also uses um, querying using link, okay, and it also supports ADO.NET data services if you have worked around it, okay. So, uh, okay, uh, I'm done with the theory part. I just want to show you like how we can build our application, okay, because we have a time limit. So I'm going to close this, and I'm taking you to my demo system. We are not going to create a very complicated application. Okay, let me show you the management portal is running here. I have logged in inside it. Okay, let me show you. Like this is the first page where if you want to log in to uh, the management portal, I just need to go back to home. Okay, it is a little bit slow because I am accessing it in a, through MSTSC. Or we can call it directly rather than waiting. Okay, now here you can see this option at top, okay, extreme uh, top right uh, corner. So this is the portal option. Just click on this and it will uh, take you to the login screen. Okay, and from there you can log in to the management portal. Now I'm already inside this portal and uh, we will see how we can create our application and host it in Windows Azure. So I showed you like all the tools required and SDK, all these things are already available. Okay, and Okay, actually I wanted to show you that screen which was showing the complete Azure in one page.
yeah this page okay so uh, 